Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best stocks to buy, as well as the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. As you can see on screen, the Nasdaq, the S&P 500, and the Dow Jones have all done phenomenal year to date, but that's not all, because we also see Bitcoin pressing higher to $70,979.55 per BTC, and we also see Exxon stock surging by 14.61% year-to-date, which is great news. The second quarter dawns on Wall Street, with stocks basking in their best start since 2019, which is great news for investors. I'm sure you can't stop hearing about artificial intelligence and the latest AI stocks. However, interestingly enough, the best S&P 500 sector has actually been energy. It was not technology. This is because oil prices are ticking higher and they are notching in gains for companies like Exxon, which has caused Exxon's share price to absolutely surge. So, for those of you who are both in technology and energy stocks, you are getting paid handsomely right now. Next up, let's talk about AT&T, which is a telecommunications company. They are literally one of the big three, because if you have cell phone service, you most likely either have AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile as your network provider. AT&T has a ticker symbol named T and that's how you would invest into this company. However, right now their share price should actually be plummeting because something terrible happened. Recently, the communications giant known as AT&T said that 7.6 million current customers and another 65.4 million former customers had their personal data and information leaked to the dark web. This has caused the company to reset their passcodes for current customers. And what's even more interesting is that these leaks came around three years after a hack claimed to have breached the company's system and acquired records of 73 million customers three years ago. The information that was leaked would include names, people's addresses, their phone numbers, and worst of all, their social security numbers. This is why the company has officially launched an investigation, but interestingly enough, so far, there has been no evidence that its system was actually breached. There are two main takeaways from this news update. The first one is that at and stock, ticker name T, is going to drop and this could operate as a great investment opportunity for investors. Secondly, if you're an AT&T customer, I would recommend calling the company to ask if your personal data was leaked. But overall, that would conclude our negative news update for AT&T. Next up, we have Disney, which is a gigantic entertainment company, which also owns a lot of intellectual property, amusement parks, apparel, and movies. Disney's annual meeting is coming up on Wednesday, to where shareholders will elect a 12-person board for the company. What's interesting about this is that the CEO named Bob Iger and many hedge fund billionaires are currently arguing over the best way to increase Disney's DIS's share price. Overall, I personally would gravitate more towards the billionaire considering that they most likely know what they're doing. However, Bob Iger has had good ideas in the past, but they both agree that Disney's share price is rather low right now and it could scream even higher. Therefore, right now may be a good buying opportunity to invest into Disney's DIS stock. However, I personally am not investing into Disney right now because my current position is healthy enough. Next up, let's talk about Reddit's IPO, and we literally made a prediction about this IPO, which has now come true. If you didn't know, Reddit is a social media company, and they were the largest social media company to have an IPO since Pinterest back in 2019. When Reddit IPO'd, their share price skyrocketed. However, I predicted that the company would pull back radically in their share price, and that's what we are experiencing right now. For context about this social media company, they currently have around 73 million daily active users with around 100,000 subreddits. Now, this social media company is rather small compared to other social media companies like Facebook and Instagram because Facebook has over 2 billion daily active users, and even Snapchat has around 400 million daily active users. To make matters worse, Reddit is not a profitable company, and they actually brought in a loss of $91 million last year. But now let me talk about the positives in regards to Reddit stock. Their net loss is narrowing as time goes on, which is great news, and Reddit is also expanding their revenue streams. Normally, Reddit makes money from their advertising revenue. However, Reddit has also given out their licensing access to various companies so their AI models can train off of their over 1 billion posts. 
And one of the most prominent licensing deals that Reddit has landed would be their AI partnership with Google, and that would be worth around $60 million per year. This clearly benefits Reddit because it increases their revenues, and it also benefits these AI companies because these AI models need a lot of content to train off of. And what better content would be than social media or social media posts, especially if these AI companies want to make their AI chatbots or large language models more human-like. Originally, this company's RDDT shares were trading at $34 per share until it skyrocketed up to $65 per share, but recently that has pulled back dramatically to just $45. Therefore our prediction officially has come true and there could be further downside left in this company, which I personally think is going to happen, but I would love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about an AI company which actually has a huge partnership with Palantir, and that would be none other than BigBear.ai. BigBear AI, ticker symbol BBAI, is an artificial intelligence and data company, and they have been on a roller coaster ride lately, especially since their share price has been very volatile. The company has posted amazing gains, however, these gains have evaporated considering that the recent earnings report fell short of Wall Street expectations, which caused the share price to crash back down. But now the question becomes could Big Bear's AI stock rebound in the future? And many analysts say yes. For context, BigBear.ai is a big data and analytics company that uses artificial intelligence to enhance organizational decision making. The company has worked with the US Department of Defense, the US Army, and the US Navy, so this company is literally no joke. The company also predicts that in the future the company's government revenue will increase, and that's not going to be a bad thing considering that this is a great revenue stream. However, there is a problem here, because BigBear.ai competes directly with companies like Palantir and C3.ai, which are both much larger than Big Bear. Palantir and C3 AI are worth billions of dollars for their valuation, while a Big Bear is only worth around $480 million as of right now. Now what's interesting is that Palantir does have an investment in Big Bear AI and vice versa. You should also know that Palantir and C3 AI have literally zero debt and they have significant cash piles to pull from. This is unlike Big Bear AI, which only has a cash pile of around $32 million compared to the billions of dollars that Palantir has, and a Big Bear also has a debt load of a long-term debt coming in at $195 million, which is substantially larger than their cash pile, so this is not good news. Lastly, I want to bring up that this company is not profitable and that they are burning cash. However, there is huge upside potential left in this company, and here's why. The business reported $22 million worth of negative free cash flow in 2023, but that figure had shrunk to just a loss of $1 million by the fourth quarter. Therefore, this company is rapidly improving their overall financial status. On top of that, they also recently acquired a company. The company that they acquired specializes in facial recognition and image analysis. On top of that, the company is winning contracts with the US military, but the news gets even better. Just listen to this. Currently, the company is guiding for a solid growth rate over the year of 2024 to where their revenues could come in between $195 and $215 million as the company integrates this newer acquisition. This would represent a growth rate of 39% since 2023. And if you know on this channel, if you can identify a company that is growing at a CAGR, which is a compounding annual growth rate of over 30%, then this company is rapidly improving, and I anticipate that this company will reach profitability. At the end of the day, Big Bear AI is a extremely risky and investors would be better off investing into companies like Palantir or C3 AI. But even with that being said, if you were to invest into Big Bear AI, there could be a large upside potential here. For me personally, I would rather wait for Big Bear AI to prove themselves by becoming profitable or being on the verge of profitability before it earns my hard earned cash. But in the meantime, I would love to hear your thoughts about this company down below in the comments, because this company seems good enough for Palantir to invest into, so that's why I would love to hear your thoughts on this company. Next up, let's talk about an electric vehicle startup named Canoe. Previously, we covered Fisker Stock, which is another electric vehicle company, but they are going bankrupt. And it seems that Canoe is right on their heels, considering that the electric vehicle startup named Canoe, ticker symbol G-O-E-V, ticker name GoEV, is about to file for bankruptcy as well. Recently, this company released that they have a going concern, considering that the company may have to file for bankruptcy. And this is why the shares of this company dropped by 26% recently. This company was never fundamentally solid, 
considering that the company recorded a net loss of $29 million for the fourth quarter, and their cash and cash equivalents are miserable, only coming in at $6.4 million. However, the good news is that Canoe does see that their 2024 revenue will be between $50 to $100 million. However, Wall Street predicts that this company should actually bring in $152.5 million, so it looks like that Canoe will miss that expectation, which is not very good for this company. Therefore, this company could actually be delisted or file for bankruptcy. And to follow up on Fisker, which is another EV company, the New York Stock Exchange has officially begun steps to delist shares of the EV startup Fisker, and it seems like Canoe is going to follow in Fisker's footsteps, but only time will tell. Next up, let's talk about DJT stock and why Trump suffered a $2 billion loss in regards to his truth social investment. The company has officially warned investors that, quote, they have substantial doubt that TMTG, which is Trump Media and Technology Group, will have sufficient funds to meet its liabilities as they fall due, end quote. This has caused investors to panic, which is why they have sold off their DJT stock. And again, in a previous video, we predicted that this company's share price would come crashing down. As of right now, the company really hasn't published many details regarding their financial performance in 2023 or their projections for 2024. However, in my opinion, the company's DJT share price and the company's overall valuation is way too high considering the amount of revenues that the company is bringing in. This is how I successfully predicted that the company's share price would plummet, and this is exactly how Donald Trump has lost around $2 billion worth of gains in this company so far. But now it begs the question, why didn't Donald Trump just take his money out of the company if he knew this was going to happen? Well, the reason for this is that Trump is unable to sell any shares of this company until six months later after the company had their SPAC merger. So if you are an investor into this company, it's best to get out right now because after those six months, I can almost guarantee that a smart investor like Trump will most likely take his equity out of this company. Now, as of right now, we don't don't know to what extent he may do this, so that's an open question, but I would love to hear your thoughts about this company down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about why FedEx lost a key USPS contract to UPS. If you didn't know, FedEx and UPS are both shipping companies, so this was a huge loss in my opinion for FedEx. This article states that FedEx Corporation, ticker symbol FDX, recently slumped in their share price after this major loss. Currently, investors and analysts are estimating just how large this problem actually is for FedEx, considering that they have lost the primary USPS air cargo provider contract to one of their rivals, which is UPS. Ultimately, I think the two big problems here is that this is negatively going to impact FedEx revenues and their margins. However, even with this negative catalyst, an analyst from Morgan Stanley actually kept an equal weight rating on this company, which is good news. And another analyst from Edward Jones is even more bullish on FedEx, and he says, and I quote, it's not a huge loss for FedEx, but it will impact their density. You are losing a consistency in terms of revenue from a pretty significant partner, but it wasn't the most profitable business for them. It's not all a negative, end quote. Ultimately, I understand how this analyst is trying to put a positive spin on this, but overall, this is still a negative catalyst for FedEx and their FDX shares. That's why the company's share price fell by around 3.15%. Next up, let's talk about Home Depot, ticker symbol HD, which recently dropped lower in their share price. However, I personally do not think that this is justified, and here's why. Investors are selling shares of HD stock because one, the company's valuation is really high, but more importantly, investors are selling because of their recent deal to buy SRS Distribution, which is a leading specialty trade company. According to the data, Home Depot will acquire SRS Distribution for $18.25 billion, including their debt in a cash deal. And it seems that investors just really didn't like this for whatever reason, and that's why they are selling their stock, because this company does have a lot of debt. However, there is a positive flip side to this, and that's why I don't think that this sell-off was justified according to this particular news. The good news is that this deal would increase Home Depot's addressable market by around $50 billion. On top of that, now Home Depot will also have SRS's assets under their wing, which would include 2,500 plus professional salespeople, more than 760 branches across the country, and a truck fleet with more than 4,000 trucks and vehicles. But it seems that investors are overlooking these facts, and they just see that the company's share price and their valuation is just too high right now, and this really set them over the edge regarding this deal, considering that Home Depot is paying a pretty penny for this overall deal deal. At the end of the day, the long-term trajectory of this company is still positive due to this deal, but I can understand why this would rub some investors the wrong way. But overall, I do think that this pullback was unjustified, and I personally still own Home Depot stock in my personal portfolio.
portfolio. Lastly, let's talk about some IPO news in regards to Rubrik, which is a company that is backed by Microsoft, and you don't want to miss out on this IPO. Rubrik, if you didn't know, is a cloud and cybersecurity startup, and recently they have filed with the US Securities and Exchange Commission, and they are looking to be traded on the New York Stock Exchange under ticker symbol RBRK. Rubrik's CEO even said, quote, we are defining the future of cybersecurity. He goes on to say, in today's world, no government or business is immune to cyber attacks. We do what matters, end quote. If all goes to plan, this company should be trading at a valuation of around $4 billion. And this company has already brought in revenues of around $599 million last year. So it would not be unheard of for this company to grow their revenue at an impressive CAGR to potentially make them a great buying opportunity, considering that their valuation is comparable to their revenue streams. The company is currently looking to IPO between $32 and $39 per share. Share. And lastly, I want to leave you with the future growth of this company. And this article says, and I quote, We have continued to invest in growing our business and advancing our solutions to capitalize on our market opportunity. As a result, in fiscal 2023 and fiscal 2024, we incurred net losses, end quote. So clearly this company is not yet profitable, but Feel free to keep your eye on this company because I do think they are going to be interesting, especially considering that this company is backed by Microsoft. And there you have it. That will conclude our news updates for today regarding the general stock market and specific stocks to buy right now. Go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you're new. Comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories. And with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.